Yo, what's up? This is Blake Olson from Mac Kite Boarding. Today I'm going to teach you how to do your first kite loop. Hey, what's up? This is Blake Olson from Matt Kiteboarding, back here in Key West, Florida with Rygo. And we're filming the new series of Ride with Blake, and we have a bunch more trick tips and videos coming your way. So today we're gonna go over how to do kite loops, and it's one of my favorite tricks right now, just because I've been getting back into them and just really feeling more comfortable, because it is kind of a scary, like intimidating trick, but it feels so good once you do them. And I'm sure a lot of you have seen the Red Bull King of the Air, which is like the most amazing, inspiring kiteboarding competition in the world, in South Africa. So just after watching that and spending time in Vietnam where all these crazy guys, all my friends are doing massive loops, after you see it done and you're explained how to do it properly, then it's not as scary and intimidating as it may seem. So whether you're a beginner, intermediate, or advanced rider, Everyone can do kite loops if you just take it slow, follow these steps, take it easy and just learn how to kite loop safely. This year we're doing it a little bit differently. Every trick tip that I'm doing for you, I'm going to be writing it out. So it'll all be written in step-by-step -step form. If you just click the eye icon in the right hand side of the screen, you can go to that script and you can have that just as a step-by-step -step instruction of written out for you exactly how to do the trick. So print it out, have steps, and bring it to the beach with you just to get that in your head before you go out for a session. So hit the eye icon and check it out. Kite loops are super fun, a little intimidating, and so what we want to do today is just make it so that kite loops aren't intimidating for you and you can go out and feel comfortable in the progression of learning how to do them because Sometimes it's just like, you just feel like you just have to go out, jump, pull the bar, it loops, and then you don't know whether you're gonna land it, whether you're gonna come crashing down, and you're just kind of going for it. And it's good to just go for something and give it your all and just um, try it. But if we can have these little steps that you can build up on, making yourself feel really comfortable, then working your way up to kite loops will be quite easy and really enjoyable. First of all, before you get into learning these, you want to know like basic down loops and jumping with the down loop. And we've done videos of these as well and we're making more this season. So check those out first and just make sure that you know how to properly down loop and jump with your kite looping before you're starting to pull it straight in the power zone where you get all that power and it's a lot of fun, but it can also um, take you down pretty hard. So make sure you're comfortable with the kite looping in the air before you get into this. Another important thing for kite looping is you want to make sure that you have the right kite. Um, I was borrowing a friend's kite the other day and I went for a big loop and it just isn't the right kite for looping. So yeah, a lot of people get caught up with which kite is for looping, which kite's not. I mean, any kite will loop. You hold your kite, the line is going to pull it in a complete circle. So don't get too caught up in it. Just know that the faster turning the kite, the better it will be for looping. You don't want to learn to loop on big kites because it's going to loop slower and then you're not going to be caught by the kite. And also a higher aspect kite, which means that it's um, narrower and a bit longer. That's going to not loop as well because it has a bigger um, radius for turning. So smaller, um, lower aspect kites are better for looping. But no matter what you have, you can make do with it. Just make sure to follow these steps and you'll be ready to go kite loop. We have watched a lot of kite looping videos and we watched everyone else's uh, video vlogs as well. And there are so many good videos out there that we're just trying to give you my spin and my um, perspective at all. We kind of take everything that we see and we just take um, a little bit from each video and also my own personal opinion, obviously. So just a quick heads up, I want you guys to practice in a size or two smaller than what you normally would be riding because you want to have that quick pull of your kite and you want to be able to be comfortable um, making the kite without all that power. So once you feel very comfortable looping it, then step it up to a bigger kite and you can go big and enjoy the 
glories of kite loops, but as you're learning, just for the sake of your own safety and everything, is just go with a smaller kite so that it loops faster, you can catch yourself and really get to know all these steps a little bit better. Step number one is practice kite loops without your board. What this means is that you can go out and you can body drag and you just go out in chest deep water and just practice looping it both ways, getting really comfortable looping the kite in both directions. Um, just practice pulling in really hard and looping it and just holding it. Practice sheeting out and looping it. You can adjust the angle of the loop. So if you have the bar like pushed out and you're pulling in to loop it, it's gonna loop in a much wider arc. If you pull in all the way, it's gonna loop in a tight arc. So just really mess around and do some like really powered uh, body drags with kite loops going both ways. Practice just swiveling the bar and just getting really comfortable with the feeling of looping it. Because before you get out on the water, I mean, and you're attached to a board that can catch, um, you really want to be comfortable. Another thing, once you're comfortable body dragging and just looping it both ways, getting really comfortable with the kite going in circles through the wind window, the next step is to go onto a strapless board or a skim board, anything without any um, attachment to the board, and then do a jump like you regularly would. But then you just don't have anything attached to your feet. So that way you work out the kinks of the landing where you can just come crashing down and be like jumping off of a cliff or something and your, your body is free and you can really practice like imagining having a board on your feet but you don't have that risk of actually like smashing down or crashing on top of the board. So if you do that, then you get really comfortable with having the kite catch you and just understanding what the kite's gonna do without any consequences. Step two is practicing doing kite loops with your board, just riding downwind. Just try and take it easy on yourself. Don't just go big and try and do the biggest loop you can. You wanna work your step-by-step -step way up to it where you feel comfortable and confident. And so what you can do is just go a little bit with a smaller kite than you regularly would. And then just practice, you don't even have to do a jump, just kind of riding downwind and looping the kite getting a feel for how fast it'll turn. And then as you get comfortable doing that, then you can just do like a little pop with a kite loop. And the smaller the kite, the easier it is. So just ride like if you can, six, seven, eight meter, and just practice riding downwind with the loop and then doing a little pop and loop and just taking it real slow and building up your confidence so that that way, once you get a couple feet off the water, kite loops, you kind of feel a bit more comfortable. And the biggest thing also is as you're doing these little steps, just make sure you're always, as you're looping it, pointing your board downwind so your edge doesn't catch. Because if you're edging against the kite and you loop it, what can happen is it can then pull you forward, catch your front edge, and that's when you just smack the water. And then step three is timing. Timing is probably the most important part of a kite loop because it's all about making the loop and then having it go up above your head in time to catch you. So if you pull the bar too late, then you're gonna be coming down as the kite loops and it won't have enough time to catch you. If you pull the bar too early, what's gonna happen is you're not gonna get the height you need in order to um, make the loop and then it's gonna pull you forward really hard. So timing, the perfect time to pull a kite loop is right before you reach the peak of your jump, that's when you pull the kite because as you loop it, it'll still keep pulling you up and then the kite will loop right as you reach the peak of your jump and it, I know it's a bit scary to get high, but one, the higher you are, the easier the kite loop. The lower you are, the more um, chance of it not catching you. Right before you reach the peak of your jump is when you pull the bar in and crank on it as hard as you can. Step four is to pull hard on your back hand and hold it. And one of my good friends, Lauren Hale, is like the kite looping master. And what he actually does is he pulls it so hard that he actually grabs the, the sheath with his other hand just to make sure that it fully commits. Not saying that you should do that, but that's like what you basically want to do is you want to pull it real hard and just hold it until you see that kite loop all the way around. This was all about commitment. Pulling, holding it, and just fully committing. And I talk about this a lot with all the tricks is that you really have to be able to see yourself doing it, kind of envision what's going to happen in your head and feel like you can land the trick before you go into it. And so it's all about going for it, going uh, all out, not bailing out. And actually that's when you end up um, falling the hardest is when you don't fully commit. So if you fully commit, you go for it, gonna do it, make sure that you 
Just grab the bar, pull it, hold it all the way until you see that kite loop back up. And then that's when we carry on to the next step. Step number five is to, after you see that kite loop around and you've completed your kite loop, that's when you push out all the way on the bar. And what that does is when you pull in on your bar, it makes it make a nice, fast, tight loop. But it's gonna, the wind's gonna keep hitting it and holding the kite there. As soon as you push out on the bar, that opens the kite up, wind hits the bottom, and then it shoots up into the sky, and that creates the lift. If you want it to catch you, kind of like a parachute, and then you'll come floating down, and you'll have a nice kite loop with a soft landing. A lot of people, it's very natural, kind of like when you're learning your first back rolls, and you're always pulling in on your back hand, kites going to the other side of the window. Um, it's very natural to just keep pulling in on the bar and just hanging on to that power. Well, what that's gonna do is just keep pulling you downwind and you're gonna come down a lot harder and a lot faster. So sheeting out is like your brakes or your parachute. And um, it's a little unnatural at first, but that's why you're gonna do the steps from jumping without the board, doing it in the water. And you can practice just body dragging, looping it and then pushing out. Or you can practice looping it and holding in. And you can see the difference of how the kite flies and how it reacts to the wind and how it shoots up. So that's probably the most common mistake is that you get the loop around, you've fully committed, you've done all the things, but um, you haven't pushed out on the bar and that's what creates the lift in order to catch you. So fully commit to sheeting out and just like punch it out and that, that immediate punch is gonna be the parachute that catches you. The next step is you don't wanna just sheet out and just leave it out. So step six is to keep the kite moving. So after you've sheeted out on the bar, you don't wanna just leave it there because then the kite's gonna shoot up above you and be a parachute that's catching you. But if the parachute just stays there and you're not doing anything with it, then you're just gonna keep falling to the water. So after you sheet out and you've felt the kite catch you, now you're back into a regular jump where you need to keep the kite moving in order to land. Something important to do with this is not, if the kite's above your head, as you, after you've kite looped, you're coming in fast, the kite will catch you, but you can still swing underneath it and the pendulum of swinging underneath the kite, then the kite's just gonna fall out of the sky, which I'm sure you've all experienced before in different tricks where you pull in all the way and then you kind of swing underneath the kite, falls out of the sky. So after the kite, you've sheeted out, it's caught you. Now you're gonna kind of float down, keep the kite moving so that you don't swing underneath it. So it's all about catching yourself in the air. Once you've caught yourself, then redirecting the kite, just like you would for your regular landing in whichever direction you're gonna go. Step number seven is land with your board flat pointing downwind. And this is really important with this trick because even if your kite doesn't catch you, um, you can land flat and you can absorb the impact of being dropped like that. But if you land on an edge, just think of all of your weight is coming down on one point. It's like jumping up and trying to land right on your toes or straight on your heel. It's not gonna feel good. And it's a lot of pressure and weight over one point. So if you get your shoulders over your knees and just land all of your weight down, even if your kite doesn't catch you, and this is part of practicing, is you are gonna have kite loops that don't catch you as you're learning. It's part of the thrill of the trick because you never know. It could be a massive, amazing loop or it could send you flying down to the water. It's very important to know how to land that. And you always wanna land with your board flat like this, like you're an airplane coming down for landing. Land flat, your weight all over the board and just come down so you take that impact. So yeah, this really applies to all tricks, you know, like we've um, done videos in the past of how to land any trick, and this applies to everything, and especially with the kite loop, because it is a little bit more of an intense trick. So another thing is just, you really wanna make sure that you're riding downwind as well. It's kind of natural that you're always riding upwind, so you wanna get right back into upwind, but riding downwind will take the tension and the power out of the kite, and will, create a nice soft landing for you. You can always land and then start riding upwind after that. So just remember to point your board flat, ride down wind, get your weight over your board and use your body like a shock. And after you do all those steps, hopefully you guys are doing kite loops. No matter what your ability, you can always do them and you can always learn no matter the age. It's all about being able to see yourself doing it and understanding how to fly the kite. All right, guys, well, that's it for this week. Hope you enjoy and you're landing some kite loops. And if you enjoy these videos, please give us a thumbs up and hit the eye icon. You can uh, get these 
print it out and you can have all the steps, step-by-step -step instructions, how to do the tricks. And we'll see you guys next week.